Hey guys, we are back. It's the next day. Uh, yesterday worked out pretty well. It had uh, more success than actually I had anticipated. Uh, so, to recap of what we did, um, we populated the main circuit board and the two amplifier boards, the components. We powered it up, uh, hooked up the GPS, hooked up the network. Uh, everything worked fine. We hooked up the uh, electric field amplifier with the test antenna. That worked out, uh, worked quite well. After uh, after that, I managed to get the uh, the station registered uh, on the website. I put the station ID in, and then once that was entered, it immediately uh, brought up a whole bunch of uh, of tracking mechanisms for for the station. Uh, really good information. It tracks kind of uh, the history of all the pulses that you've detected, the range, and uh, and so on. Lots of useful useful data. After that I put the uh, magnetic field amplifier into a little case. Um, since I'm going to be mounting this all outside I figured might as well get that done. Um, so put it in a case. I soldered the antennas to the amplifier board uh, and then plugged it into the to the main uh, the main station board and it fired up, it worked, it started recording uh, pulses. The problem was the board kept switching. Uh, it operates in a few different modes. Uh, from my understanding, from the little bit of reading that I've done, if the board detects too many pulses in a short time period, it'll go into an interference mode uh, where, you know, it. It's, they're not real pulses, it just suspects that there's some other interference mechanism uh, in, in your nearby environment. Uh, so it stops, from what it looks like, it stops uh, submitting those, those pulses to, to the server. Makes sense, because they're not real, they're just uh, interference pulses. So I was getting the, the station was changing into that interference mode a lot. Um, so I, you know, I, I unplugged the station and um, well, I went to bed for the, for the night. Today what I've done is I've moved the entire setup uh, upstairs onto the uh, the second story of my house. It's far enough away from uh, electrical uh, lines that it should be okay. It's not perfect and ideal. Again, I'm still kind of working on how to mount the antennas in my detached garage that I'm building. Uh, that'll be kind of a part two of the video once I kind of get all that worked out. So I'm going to let the equipment stay in the loft for a few days just to get a track record of, of pulses um, recorded on, on my account. So I'll give you a look at uh, the current setup right now, <clears throat> where everything's sitting. Uh, then we'll take a look at the live uh, lightning map and see, you know, where uh, where the lightning strikes that I'm detecting are, uh, are originating from. And uh, then we'll look at the account and take a look at some of the data. The, the system has been on uh, for about a half a day. So, again, you can't see too much, uh, but we are starting, or the, the, uh, the software is starting to track... Um, the uh, the pulses that the the station is receiving. Okay, let's go take a look at the uh, the setup as it is right now. Okay, so here's the main station board. As you can see, not an ideal or a permanent setup. Um, but it works for now. So we have the main board and then the antennas are along this back wall. The nice thing about here is there's no electrical lines running anywhere near here. So there's the magnetic field amplifier in the bottom of the case. There's the antenna perpendicular to each other. <coughs> and there's the little electric field detector with the still the test antenna on it. So that's the setup. You can hear it clicking away. 
as it's receiving the uh, pulses. Okay, apologies for filming my computer screen directly. I don't really have a, a good method of doing this. Since I moved the, uh, the detector to its current location, it very rarely, I don't think I've ever seen it go into that, uh, uh, that interference mode. It kind of stays in normal mode um, all the time now. Uh, you can see on the live lightning map, there's not much going on right now but occasionally you will see my detector which is located up here there's one grab a pulse from uh, from a lightning strike now I should be getting um, more than I am uh, and we'll take a look at the firmware to see uh, to see where I can uh, I can improve on that um, but yeah it is it's grabbing signals down from uh, from Mexico and uh, down in the Caribbean. So uh, yeah, I'd say uh, pretty good success for uh, well, not very much work uh, up to date. Okay, so here we are on the firmware of the controller. You can see. It always stays in status normal. It never goes into interference mode since I moved it to the uh, to the second floor, which is nice. Uh, no GPS errors, four overflow errors. I think those were probably when I was moving the electric field amplifier, positioning it uh, in the window. And yeah, when it gets an overflow, it turns to interference mode and stops transmitting the signals. But since then, it's been good. You see we're grabbing a whole bunch of signals and the GPS is running a lot better. It is, uh, it's, has 99.5 percent, oh it's jumping around, Nine, where the heck's going, there we go, 99.5 percent availability so it's always has a GPS lock. This device ID, where's my device ID? So this device ID right here, that's the number that you enter into your station ID, your processor ID, and as soon as you do, you uh, assign that station to your account, and it starts recording the, the signal shape that you're acquiring, plus a whole history of uh, signal activities. Uh, so this is what I'm going to be watching. I'm going to leave this uh, this station running in its current location for a while, and get you know get a good idea of of uh, my signal activity, and then compare that to uh, to when I move it uh, to its permanent installation in the garage. Right now, I'm pulling signals according to this from as close as 737 kilometers away to as far as 4,833, uh, yeah, 36 kilometers away. So not bad, uh, considering <laughs> they're sitting <laughs> on my windowsill um, on the second floor of my house. Nothing too, uh, nothing too special running. Um, but yeah, a lot of uh, interesting information that it tracks as well as a lot of um, settings to, uh, to, to optimize. So uh, yeah, see, uh, see what I can find out. Uh, the one thing that I could improve on right away is to remove that test antenna from the E-field uh, amplifier and put just a regular antenna on. For the E-Field, you don't need a very fancy uh, antenna, it's just a, a piece of wire. They recommend, I think, about 15 or 20 centimeters long. So you remove the, the test detector, just cut it off, and then put one end of a piece of wire into the, uh, the terminal there, and then just have it uh, sticking straight up. 
The reason I say this is because if you look on amplifier 2, the E, uh, the electric field signal, it's only reached its trigger threshold, so that's when it will actually start recording a peak uh, or a pulse 10 times in the last hour 24 minutes. So that's, it's not, it's not collecting much data. So it's not a very, it tells me it's not a very sensitive detector. So that's a, something that I can, uh, I can change really quick and, uh, and see what kind of improvements we get. Uh, the the B field amplifier or the B field antennas. I don't think there's too much I can do uh, with those, other than again mounting them outside, higher up, and making sure that they are perfectly level, perfectly uh, perpendicular, in order to grab the maximum amount of signal uh, when a pulse arrives. But overall, pretty happy. I'm pretty happy that my station is actually detecting uh, some pulses and tracing them back to, uh, to specific lightning strikes. All right, well that's about it for part one. Like I said, I'm gonna let the, uh, the system run for, uh, well, until I get the, uh, the outdoor antenna uh, situation all sorted out. It'll be nice to get a good track record of, uh, of pulses and then once we move the whole system outside into its permanent location with the uh, with the antennas um, outside of all structures and, and high up in the air uh, to see the difference between you know the old arrangements the distance that the pulses were traveling uh, and the new uh, the new setup so that'll be uh, that'll be quite interesting hopefully that'll all be uh, accomplished maybe by this weekend we'll see it depends how I kinda decide to uh, to set everything up out there. The other thing I have to look into, I gotta read a bunch of uh, forms and things like that in regards to all the settings that uh, that you can play around with on the uh, on the firmware side of things. I'm just, I'm kind of inclined just to leave it on automatic but uh, from what I read you, you get better results when you uh, when you tweak these things to your current, your specific uh, environmental conditions. So I'll do more reading on that and uh, hopefully we can capture uh, pulses from kind of all this or the vast majority of strikes uh, that are occurring nearby. Uh, so like I said I should be uh, should be mounting this in its permanent location probably in about four or five days uh, and then we'll uh, we'll have a final video update uh, then. Okay see you later.